Hey everybody, this is Ben J. Johnson, and guess what guys? The Super Mario Bros. trailer is finally here! Okay, well, technically it's a teaser trailer, and um, it's been out for about a week or so, but um, you know, I don't know. I watched it the day it came out, um, I took a few days to process everything that was go going on inside it, and um, I thought now I might as well give you guys a little um, breakdown of, ev of everything that the trailer has to offer, and what I, as a Nintendo fan, can um, offer to it. So yeah, I was considering making a reaction video to it, but um, frankly, number one, I didn't. I decided against it because um, reaction videos are kind of a god awful, um, god awful um, form of content. And number two, um, my reaction video to um, the 2020 announcement is pretty much my is exactly the same as um, how I felt about this trailer. So in order to do something a little bit different, I'm going to be doing a breakdown analysis of. The trailer, shot for shot, shot. Okay, not really shot for shot, but everything that I I could really find interesting as a Nintendo fan to talk to you guys about, and and what and what my overall thoughts about or the whole process are, and how I'll be able to go and and what I can give what of uh, what I can give my in in terms of my intellect and um uh, knowledge of Nintendo. So yeah, so with that said, let's get straight to the breakdown. Let's go. Okay, so in the very first shot of the trailer, we're introduced to like a really icy landscape, and if you look in the distance, you can see like a little ice-esque kingdom that has like a bunch of um, um, like little spiral buildings and pillars that are kind of reminiscent of the spiral um, of, of the spiral mountain scene in the first level of Super Mario World. That at least that's what I took out of it. Next, after some fiery, after some very lava-esque fireballs, we're seeing the whole of we, we, what we can make out to be Bowser's Doom Ship, the one that's been prevalent in every single mainline Mario series game since um, uh, Super Mario Bros. 3. However, the biggest difference between the one seen in those in the Mario games and in, in this teaser is the fact that um, the whole seems to be really made of some sort of like granite rock sort of thing. And um and when we see it later, we can see that there's like an entire um civil like rocky like playground s like mini civilization that's like made out of like as like lava little like like little like pools of lava. So yeah, you can so yeah, it's not just like so yeah, the doom ship is no longer just like some sort of generic like wooden ship. It's like a whole freaking castle like entity to it. And now we're introduced to Kamek who's being voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson. Kamek differs, differs slightly from his video game um, counterpart, where while his face and glasses and hat proportions look very correct, his body is, uh, is drastically different, as he's, he appears to be a lot less chunkier compared to like what he's seen in like most Mario games. However, we can still see that um, his, um, his um, hunched back is still prevalent, although just, just slightly. You know, or if I'm not mistaken, it might be more prevalent in this tr teaser than when in, in what is seen in the games, actually. Also, if you look around him, you can see that there's like an entire herd of um, Hammer Brothers or Koopa Troopers with Hammer, Brother, um, Hammer Brothers um, hats. And next up, we're finally introduced to the big baddie himself, Bowser, voiced by Jack Black. And as we can see in both of these two succeeding shots, um, Bowser is very... He's very badass looking this time around, and as a matter of fact, as in as in his skin is really detailed. His he he has just the right amount of expressiveness on his face. As a matter of fact, the way he's rendered in this this teaser is really reminiscent of how um he looked in both Super Smash Bros. Melee, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and um Super Mario World plus Bowser's Fury. Also, we get a really epic shot of um tracking shot of a shell and his tail as it goes up as we see the top of his head. So yeah, that's that's really awesome. Now as Bowser is making his way down um, a corridor of his minions. The camera focuses on two enemies in particular, a, a Hammer Brother and a Koopa Troopa who surprisingly seem to be really decked out, complete with an eye patch and um, a, shoulder pa a spike shoulder pad. Now, it might be interesting to note that um, in the Mario RPG series and in, in a couple of the Paper Mario games, uh, the Thousand Your Door and Super Paper Mario, the Koopa Troopas, there were a, f a couple species of Koopa Troopas that you could fight that had decked out armor like this. Um, in, in, the, in a couple of the Paper Mario games, the Koopa Troopas had eye patches, and um, in Super Paper Mario, there was a Koopa Troopa that was decked out with knight armor. So th this, this, this could be a reference to, um, to those specific um, enemies. 
Bowser says, open the gates, and then after that, we're, the gates to the kingdom open, and we're greeted to a, an entire shot consisting of mostly penguins, taken with their designs being taken from Super Mario 64, as um, most as all the succeeding games had them had their eyes be a lot more lifeless and lifelike. However, in this shot, you can tell they're taken from Super Mario 64, as their eyes are a lot more cartoons this time around. Now, while there's a bunch of penguins in the background and a couple in the front, you can see that there's actually one penguin in the front that actually has a crown on its head. This could possibly be an addendum to the various kings seen in Super Mario um, uh, 3, where after when Mario had defeated a Koopaling, he would use the wand to help reverse whatever effects Bowser had put on them when Mario initially got there. And um, this also raises the question, are there more animals in this in this film that are more Mario animal enemies that have have this like this like title of um king, king, and and yeah this this can this penguin king in the middle voiced by Kari Payton by the way he could be seen as kind of an addendum to all those Mario bosses that have like the word king or some sort of royalty title to them you know like a uh, Babam King Thwomp King Honey Queen you know so that kind of thing. After when the Penguin King commands his army to attack Bowser, they start throwing a herd of snowballs at him in order, in order to quote unquote taste their fury. Now, it might be interesting to note that in the original Mario games, the penguins were never capable of throwing snowballs. As a, as a matter of, although, although in other games, they have been used by other players and have ther served almost every other mean. For example, in New Super Mario Brothers, a snow spike could throw snowballs and um... In Super Mario 3D World, um, the snowballs were an item that Mario could pick up, and in New Super Mario Bros. U, um, they appeared as obstacles, and they they were also in Mario Kart as an obstacle as well. So, so yeah, um, this is this is a really really interesting deviation from how the penguins originally behaved in Super Mario 64. You think this is something they would have done in the original game, but surprisingly, it wasn't. Not much I can really talk about in this shot, although it might be interesting to note that there is a um there is a team of blue Koopa Troopas as opposed to like all to, to um all the red ones that we've seen that we saw in the previous shot. So maybe the Koopa Troopas are gonna be divided into colored clans? Who knows? After when Bowser burns down the penguins ice kingdom or whatever the sort, um, we see a shot of him surrounding a power star proclaiming, Now who is gonna stop me? Now uh, the significance of the Power Star hasn't exactly been revealed yet, but based on on how much Bowser is idolizing it, we can only assume that the Power Star is going to play a fairly important role in this film. Like, maybe Bowser needs this one star to rule the kingdom, or it's going to be like an Avengers MCU thing where he, where the villain needs like multiple stones of to power this one thing to like make make his um conquest for role domination completely possible. Hmm. Yeah, so yeah, those are really two um, plot elements that I think could be incorporated in the film, but for me personally, I think they're just going to stick to the one star, because I think that'll be easier for um, audiences to uh, latch onto. Now, it's at this point in the movie that we're introduced to Maru, but first, I want to talk about the setting that he's in. Now, you see this little pipe right here and how it's surrounded by a little brick structure with like little vines sticking out on front. Yeah, this can possibly see, be seen as a reference to um the Wooded Kingdom from Super Mario World, where the whole idea of that world was that there was a bunch of um, oh yeah, a bunch of like nature growing out of um a man-made structure. Additionally, the, the specific area where Mario lands um is really filled to the brim with mushrooms, a lot more than the title of the kingdom suggests. Now, mushroom, the mushrooms itself have never been, like, a huge part of the Mushroom Kingdom, as, like, the village that the, like, Princess Peach's castle is, like, associated with doesn't really have, like, a whole lot of mushrooms around it. However, the abundance of mushrooms could be reminiscent of those levels from uh, Super New Super Mario Brothers, where Mario had to, like, um, land on balancing mushrooms, or, or rising and falling mushrooms, or hell, even that, um, that track from Mario Kart Wii, where, um, the whole stick of the track was that it was a mushroom mushroom valley, uh, like overseeing a mountain. So yeah. And now we're introduced to the big hero himself, Mario, voiced by is the inimitable, memeable Chris Pratt. And to start off with, Mario looks really good. I mean, I mean, w w I mean, of course, yeah. We're not used to seeing Mario with this much facial expression, but that's to be expected in a movie where he's constantly talking. Now, just and to start off with, um, 
his, the circles on his gloves don't really have those circles, aren't really there anymore. Instead, they're lines. If you look really closely, there's a couple shots in the light where you can actually see, like, a bunch of, like, lines that are, like, connecting between, like, the fingers and stuff and, like, and, like, the, the lower part of the gloves. Um, his, I mean, his overalls are very well detailed. Kind of like, um, new Super Smash Bros. Brawl and, um, Super Mario Odyssey, where basically, where the, the developers tried to, try to put his, um, um, likeness into a much more, um, slightly more, um, abstract, um, look. Also, one last thing I want to bring up is that, um, Mario's hair is brown just like in the games. However, you might also notice that his mustache is actually like a darker shade of brown. So yeah, that's a really um interesting um um color change they went for um for um a, an iconic video game character whose mustache is normally black. Mario stumbles around the field and he says to himself, "What is this place?" And then he finds a blue mushroom. He's about to touch it, but then a toad pops out of nowhere and says, "Do not touch that mushroom! You'll die!" Now obviously we know that's Kiki Michael Key because he's a really distinctive voice, but. Let's talk about Toad's design. Toad has a fairly unique design, to say the least. For one, he's wearing a backpack, which a lot of people on social media have actually theorized that this is actually Captain Toad, and the real Toad is in um, uh, Peach's castle somewhere. Also, um, I don't we don't know if this is going to be the case, but we but a lot of people have also said that Kiki Michael Key might be voicing all the Toads in the game, not just this one or the one in Peach's castle, if they are on assembly line, that is. That would make a lot of sense seeing how um, um, Eric Baza may or may not be voicing all the Hammer Brothers and so on and so forth. So yeah, that's something to think about when you see the movie next year. Also, Toad appears to have some really stubby legs, kind of like a penguin-esque legs. Um, yeah, cause, cause, yeah, cause it's also, uh, worth mentioning that, um, in the, in the games, the Toads never really had any, like, distinctive legs or sort. It was just a body and a two feet. I mean, next time you watch the trailer, just uh, pay attention to Toad's white trousers, and you might notice some movement going on there, yeah. Toad then says, come on, Mario, which I think is probably the same scene, but maybe, like, 45 seconds later or two minutes later, you know, because tra teaser trailers like to, like, mix up, like, um, the film footage, like, create suspense, like, what's gonna happen in between what they're showing us. And then, afterwards, we're seeing a shot where Mario says, Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. And then we're greeted to another beautiful shot of um, uh, the mushrooms, as well as the first look at the kingdom. And now, in the background, you can notice that Peach's castle is at the very top, overseeing everything that her what's happening in her kingdom. And to the right, to the left, you can see like a, a couple little islands that are just floating in midair, kind of like um, the various worlds that were seen in Super Mario 64. You know, like Rainbow Ride, the Womp's Fortress. And to the to the very right, you can see another floating island, but this one is distinctive because it actually has like a little waterfall going around, like like the uh, has a little waterfall going on it. This could possibly be a reference to Fossil Falls from Super Mario Odyssey, but this is just my speculation. In the final shot of the teaser, we're f also given our first look at Luigi, who in this shot is running away from a herd of dry bones in a forest at which I actually presumed was going to be the, the same setting as Luigi's Mansion, but if you look in the very next shot, you can see that there's he's actually running towards a castle, which which I can which from my recollection could be a reference to Dark World from Super Mario Bros. 3. Now, if it was just the forest, I would be calling it the, the forest setting of Luigi's, Luigi's Mansion. But since there's a castle there, it makes me, it really makes me think about that maybe this could be Copa Bowser's Old Kingdom, Dark World from Super Mario Bros. 3. You know, because, um, you know, because, um, you know, because Dark World is exactly what it is, dark. It, it's a very cursed place where Bowser used to rule before he had his set, sights set on the Mushroom Kingdom. So yeah, uh, that pretty much that's about does it for my um an breakdown of the of the Super Mario Bros. movie trailer. Um, did you guys like the trailer? Um, did you did you not like it? Let me like know what you think down below. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot to unpack considering um Nintendo has been like so protective of the Mario brand for years, and this is like the first time we're ever getting like a really big budget um production on this scale. So yeah, um, again. Like I said in the past, I'm really looking forward to the movie. It's It's been a childhood dream of mine to see a Mario movie on the big screen, excluding the 1993 film because that was way beyond my time. 
so yeah um so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video um like i said uh like rate comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the, in the next one boop